Really in that area. He just passed the police garage and there was a vehicle in front of us. We initially we did not know that he was following running after a vehicle. So you said police what? Garage. Garage. Alright. And that would be the carnifying end. Towards 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 which factories? No, I have no idea about the factories there. I d I don't have a thorough knowledge of that. So environment. so you let's say police garage you said. Yes. So you pass the police mobile and then you turn right towards the police garage. Leaving the main highway to Banjo. Yes. Yes, you leave it, uh, you leave it behind. <laughs> okay. And then what happened? At this point, he <coughs> drove fast, you know, passing by a vehicle. What type of vehicle was this? I can't remember the mark of the vehicle, but it was a small vehicle. Okay. All right, proceed. When he was uh, just opposite to the vehicle, as he was trying to pass the vehicle, he shouted, Gentlemen, the driver is the idiot. Could you say that again? The driver is the idiot. The driver is the idiot? Yes. And what did you guys the understand him to The same that he was telling us about, he used to call as the idiots. And you understood him to mean what? You know? You as he was calling these rebels idiot, we would take it to be the rebellion that we are supposed to be taking on in order to protect our territory and our people. So when he gave the order, in the initially none of us fired. He almost passed the vehicle. I can say the source came adjacent from the driver. So he, but he never stopped. He was shouting, shoot, shoot, you better shoot. When we shot, he never stopped. He drove through the streets. Who shot? Myself, Deng, and Manjang. Though I was from the left hand side down there, from the left hand side of the vehicle, I came to join Deng, we all really shot, to be honest. Okay. Did Tumbul fire? Tumbul didn't fire. He was the commander giving the orders and driving the vehicle. Did Sana Manjang fire? He did. Did you, Mali Jata, fire? I shot, sir. Ali Ujeng, did he fire? He did shoot. And then what happened? And then Tumbul continued driving through the you, streets. So you, you did not we necessarily are, stop? No, there was no stop. We were all panicked, and at this time, there was no question as to who that man was. Until where he met his vehicle, parked the, uh, the, the taxi bench, boarded his vehicle and drove us right to Kanilai. But nobody spoke because I'm telling you, this are situation that when you find yourself in, you cannot tell how you will feel. And when you shot, did you know who you fired at? I did not know this until the following day when I came to Combo. Did you know at this stage that there were other occupants of that vehicle? I wouldn't be able to tell even if there were other occupants because when he said the driver, the driver was our point of focus. How many bullets did you release? I shot one. Your colleagues? I can't tell how many bullets they shot. I know that I shot one. Okay. So you went to Kanilai. And then what happened on the way, on the on route to Kanilai? <coughs> Pardon? Tell us what happened en route to Kanilai. Nobody spoke. We went to Kanilai the following day was when Hitumbul came to see us. And he met me at the school. <coughs> and the what happened there? The jungle warfare school. He came with an envelope containing some dollars. And he said to us, this is a token of appreciation from the big man. Big man implies the president. Did you know for certain he was referring to the president? Very well. And he was you talking were to the president dollars. during the operation. Mm -hmm. And after that, he said, this is a token of appreciation from the big man. I would be certain that it was from the former president. Tumbul had no source of gathering dollars. More so to give us money in that currency, you know, to cover up something. I would not believe that.